Edmund Irish Eddie Boyle carved out a reputation as a shrewd and enterprising individual, earning his stripes as a car thief. His prowess caught the eye of the infamous Gambino family, and he rose through the ranks to become an indispensable associate to Thomas Carbonaro, a respected soldier in the Gambino family. Boyle's loyalty made him a trusted confidant among Gambino ranks. As the years passed, he got more involved with Cosa Nostra, orchestrating a string of increasingly crazy crimes, from bank burglaries to brazen heists and even murder. His name struck fear into the hearts of those who dared cross him, and his allegiance to the family remained unquestionable, even in the face of the law. But as Boyle's empire expanded, so too did the shadows of suspicion. Rumors swirled of betrayal and whispers of dissent, and in a world where the Italian didn't trust the Irish, one wrong move could end a business relationship. The feds were focused on the Gambino and Irish mob connection. Boyle found himself at a crossroads where every decision carried the weight of life or death. The Boyle crew was notorious for robbing banks and retail stores, armed with custom-made tools crafted for the sole purpose of plunder. They targeted banks nestled in the heart of bustling business districts. The feds believed the Boyle crew was robbing banks for a decade before getting on the government's radar. Nearly $900,000 vanished in a blink from the National Westminster Bank on Fifth Avenue, just one score among a string of meticulously planned robberies, totaling close to two million in one year. The streets of Brooklyn were getting hot, and the Gambino family was targeted by the Lucchese family. James Heidel got mixed up with the infamous mafia cops, Louis Apolito and Stephen Caracappa. James's disappearance in 1986 had long remained a haunting mystery. A tale whispered in hushed tones among those privy to the city's underworld secrets. But the truth, as it often does, clawed its way to the surface, revealing a harrowing tale of bloodshed. Abducted by the Mafia cops, James Heidel met a grisly fate at the hands of Lucchese underboss Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Weeks earlier, Heidel tried to kill Gaspipe but failed. Now it was Casso's turn to return the favor. James' brother Frank Heidel never actually knew who killed his brother James, but he always felt it was connected to the Gambino family. A few years went by, and Frank was still bothered by his brother's unsolved murder. That's when Frank decided to cooperate with the government. The Mafia cops told Irish Eddie that Frank was working with the FBI. It was the weekend, and Frank Heidel went to the Scarlet Strip Club on Staten Island. Inside a parked car, three shadowy figures sit in the vehicle, their eyes fixed on the club's entrance like predators stalking their prey. Among them, Frank Heidel emerged into the night, unaware of the danger coming his way. Moments later, as Frank approached his car from having a good night, Two men sprang into action, closing in on their target. Before Frank could react, gunfire erupted. Three shots rang out tearing into Frank's body, leaving him shot dead in the cold sidewalk. It was a ruthless execution, a brazen display of violence orchestrated by none other than Eddie Boyle himself, the mastermind behind the Irish mob. Frank's betrayal had sealed his fate. His cooperation with the FBI was a cardinal rule a gangster should not break. As the police arrive at the scene, the Boyle crew disappeared into the night. In the unforgiving streets of Staten Island, betrayal will be dealt with accordingly. One of the killers was Tommy Donos, an associate part of the Gambino Brooklyn faction. Tommy's role in the ruthless murder of Frank Heidel got him proposed for induction into the Gambino family. But as the years passed, the feds were aware of Tommy Dono activities. The feds arrested Tommy on racketeering and murder charges. With mounting evidence and witnesses, Tommy's fate was sealed. Eddie Boyle continues to reign supreme. His influence was respected among the toughest Gambinos. Boyle also worked with infamous Gambino soldier Thomas Huck Carbonero, his hands stained with the blood of countless victims. Boyle was no stranger to the violent machinations of Cosa Nostra. Murder, extortion, gambling as hustle stretched like a shadow across the landscape of lawlessness. Boyle had skills in orchestrating crimes ranging from auto thefts to interstate transportation of stolen goods that elevated him to a position of power within the Gambino hierarchy. For Boyle, the line between right and wrong had long since blurred. Survival mode kicked in and he had to be cunning to survive. The feds had enough of Irish Eddie and arrested him as crimes. Boyle was hit with racketeering conspiracy that went back 20 years. One of the charges was the murder of mob informant Frank Heidel. Though a jury acquitted him of pulling the trigger himself outside a Staten Island strip club, the weight of Boyle's involvement in the heinous act was undeniable. His hands may not have wielded the weapon, but ordering the murder was just as bad. For Boyle, the courtroom became a stage for the final act of his dark story a reckoning long overdue for a man whose name had become known in the mob world. As the gavel fell and the verdict was read, the story of Irish Eddie came to an end. Okay, that's it for now. That you for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more stories on your favorite gangster.